the first station, we talk a little bit about grains and feedstuffs, and then you work with your partner to identify what's in the bags. And then we talk about what they are and why you might choose one and not the other. You've got some blanks on your paper, and the first thing you want to ask our owner is what her horse's name is. His name is Indy. What else do you want to ask her? What kind of horse is he? He's a Dutch warm blood. Keep going. How old is he? 16. What do you do with him? He does the 3-6 AO hunters and the hunter derbies. And what else might you want to know about Indy to help you design the best diet for him? How's your riding going this summer? How much are you doing? Good. He gets ridden every day for about half an hour, and then we do a jumping lesson once a week. And are you showing? Yes. About one or two shows a month. What's his weight look like right now? Good question. Um, I think he's kind of chubby. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let you know. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? There's Kathleen, join us. 11 years. 11 years? Yep. You said he was 16? Yeah. So practice is your practice math. This is some foreshadowing. <laughs> if she's had him 11 years and he's 16 now, how old was he when she got him? Excellent, okay. Okay, so what you, what you do next is come up with your sheets and try to guess what these different bags are. So we, we cut out some. If you couldn't find A's and other letters, we cut out a few of them because there were duplicates. What are you calling B? It's chopped, chopped, hay. Chopped, hay. chopped hay. Yeah, let me make sure that's what I'm calling it. Chopped hay. All right. When might you use this? When yeah. Yeah. older horse that doesn't have good teeth, can't chew well. Yeah. Um, the other the other instance might be if you're in an area of the country that doesn't have good consistent hay source, and so you can buy your hay in a bag. And I just thought of this. If you have an HYPP horse and you need his diet to be super, super consistent, buying all his food in a bag is one way to do that. Because you know, when you get different cuts of hay, it could have different levels of what mineral is of concern for them. Potassium. Potassium. But if you buy it in a bag, I mean, it's got a, a guaranteed analysis, right? Okay, so this one's done. Did anyone have this this morning? Yeah, all right, so you know what it is. It's rolled oats, right. Um, what, what is this used for in horses? Energy, the other word for energy is what? Calories, yeah. So if you've got a horse, you've, you've got his hay, his roughage, his forage you know, addressed, and then you complete and balance his diet on the vitamin, mineral, and, and, and protein side, but you, you think he needs a little bit more weight or a little bit more energy when he performs, oats are like the classic horse feed to give. Perfect. All right, there you go. And I'm looking for, oh, this one I think is really hard, so I won't blame you if you don't get it, but what did you put down? Maxi And that's the extruded rice bran pellets. Okay, so I asked for, and I don't always get what I ask for, but I asked for rice bran powder, and the best we could do in this neck of the woods was these extruded pellets. So you guys did good. Did everybody get rice bran pellets? I see some confusion in the bag. No, we were confused with the other two. Yeah. That one with the... This isn't typically how you see how you see rice bran, but regardless, what might you use rice bran for? Put weight on. Put weight on because it's 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 how much fat? Let's start with low, medium, high. 
Okay, high is good. Now give me a number. 12%? Give me a higher number. <laughs> and higher. Oh, 90. Oh, lower. Eight, How about 40? <laughs> Oh, did, did you say, so? oh. I think it's in seven. Oh. And I was like, "Mo, well, that's lower than 12. Okay, it's about 40% fat. So it, it is a good source of calories for horses. What is the thing that we have to be concerned about if you just go and buy your basic rice bran? What is the thing in the back of your mind? Calcium right, it, uh, rice bran straight, straight out of the manufacturer is very, high in phosphorus. What is the ratio of calcium to phosphorus supposed to be in horses? You want to say two to one. Yeah, so it's like it's like 1.2 to one to two to one. So the point is more calcium than phosphorus. Rice bran has more phosphorus than calcium, so it's an inverted ratio. So you want to buy, if you're buying it for your horse to add to the diet, you want to get a fortified rice bran that has calcium added. So, all right, now, so this is the one that I have trouble with. <laughs> what do you guys, what did you guys call this one? He said enrich plus. You say hay stretcher for everything. One day you will be right. <laughs> what did you call it? Enrich plus. It really, everyone called it that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's not. It's, it's strategy. What, what is the base in, in strategy? What is it? What is it? Bee pulp. Bee pulp, yeah. Does it smell pretty sweet? It's not. Uh, I don't know. There's like something else in here. It looks like amplify nuggets or something. Hmm. So let's talk about strategy. What category is it? It's a fortified grain, yeah. So, and, and define fortified grain for me, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Who wants to do that? You guys in the back have been very quiet. And there's three of you, so you have, the, you have an advantage, so come on. I do, I'm scared. You do. So we're not doing so well. <laughs> it's okay. I would say it's a step down from complete, so it's not going to have the hay portion. Excellent. It's really good. What would it? What would be a? It's a step up from what? So it's between a complete feed. There's Carolyn. A ration balancer. A ration balancer. Do you guys all hear that? So it goes mineral supplement, then multivitamin, then ration balancer, fortified grain, complete feed. Excellent. Um, I'm on G now. Okay. You know what you said last time? Say that now. No! <laughs> the other one. Enrich plus. This, so this is the ration balancer. And how much of this would you feed a horse each day? It could be one to two pounds. Some horses even get a half a pound. And, and so what are the ingredients in, in this? What are the, I shouldn't say ingredients, nutrients. That's a better word. What are the nutrients in this? Minerals and vitamins. All right. So why do you feed a ration balancer? Why do you go to the store and say, I am going to get a ration balancer for my horse? What's, what are you thinking? Your easy keeper. Easy keeper. Or horses that need like more protein, but you don't want to pile on the grain. Maybe. Maybe. If you're not feeding up to the label of like... The fortified size, grain. Yeah, yeah could. Grain. Yep. Yeah. So you can replace the, you can bridge that gap of the vitamins and minerals and protein well, vitamins and minerals with either ration balancer or a multivitamin if you're not feeding the whole thing. We haven't done any math yet, so you're good. We, we, did, we did a practice round, but okay. I'll give that to you. Now we're on H. Yeah, I was going to have you smell this one, but that would probably give it away, right? So sweet feed is a, I call it a textured feed. It is still in the fortified grain category. Um, what does it provide a horse? So calories, yep. Above, that's the what makes it a step above or below, whatever you said, of a, of a ration balancer because it's, it provides the vitamins, the minerals, the protein, and the calories. What is the one thing that we kind of don't like about sweet feeds, though? 
Because it's got some molasses. I mean, the name itself, sweet feed, right? They, they add molasses to it, so that it tastes good, so horses eat it. But we find that a lot of our horses nowadays don't need that extra sugar for one reason or the other. Um, we talked a little bit about Easy Keeper. What is a specific condition that a horse might not need extra sugar? IRL. Say it again. IRL. Insulin resistance or equine metabolic syndrome. What, what's another one? Say it again. Uh, yes, yeah, I was, got, I was gonna give you a hint that, it, that my horse has it. So PSSM, or what, what do the letters stand for? Yes, polysaccharide storage myopathy, right. And they just don't tolerate high amounts of sugar. Where are you putting all these? Oh, I'm just... All right, uh, I think I'm on... I think that's an I. Right, so when might we choose this for a horse? Older horses with no teeth or they're having trouble eating the, the full long stem hay. Because we want them to get long stems, but they don't have the teeth for it anymore. So we give them as long a stem as we can with hay cubes. And we tend to do what with them first? And the soaking in this case softens the hay cubes so that they can chew them apart and, and swallow them better. Why else do we soak hays? Extra water is a good one. Take out the sugar. Take out the sugar, right. So one of the um, myths or misperceptions is that when you soak hay, you leach out everything. Sugars and nutrients and vitamins and minerals and protein. There's been a, a number of research studies about that, and that's not exactly true to an extent. There's a, a chart of time. So if you just soak for a little bit, you're just like, What's another condition that you might soak for just a little bit, the shortest soaking possible? Even just wetting, even steaming. Allergies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. respiratory right. allergies. So the names of those keep changing. Heaves is always safe, because that's the layman's term, right? And now we call it RAO, or recurrent airway obstruction. Before that, it's small airway inflammatory disease, or SED. So many acronyms. I didn't make them up, and I apologize. But um, so, if you're going to just steam or wet hay, you're not really changing its nutrient composition at all. You're just damping down the dust and mold, right? So the horse doesn't breathe it in when he sticks his nose in and eats it. The next step is soaking for how long for the IR horse? In cold, 60 minutes in cold water about 30 minutes in warm water to get the sugars and starches out. Because what is a good percentage of NSC or non-structural carbohydrates? Oh yeah, I got them on that one. <laughs> this group is good, they're getting everything because so I have to come up with harder and harder questions. Nobody here must have, what is it? I was just guessing, I said 3%. Oh, that's, uh, we would love it. More like, um, 12 is kind of the number that's thrown around, so 10 to 15. But cl clearly none of you have IR EMS horses, so you would, you would like know that. Okay, let's move on. This one should be fairly easy. Did you all get this? Oh, it's flax, yeah. Here's the difference. I will pull this up at the same time so you can see them. So the big heavy one is flax and the little one is chia. What do you notice is the difference? Color. Color. The flax is brown and the chia is more black or gray. What else? Flax is more of a seed. They're both seeds. The shape is more of a like a chia's little round balls. Yeah. It, well, it's smaller, right? What, what do they tell you about flax seeds? That you have to like grind them or soak them or something? You can. You don't have to with chia. I mean, these things get absorbed. So flax was J and chia was N. And we like these because, but for both of them, why? They, they're the highest plant-based source of omega-3 fatty acids, yep. Okay, one person's gonna answer this. Say it now. 
<laughs> hey, the, the, so these are hay stretcher pellets. Yeah, these are really big pellets, which is how I know they're hay stretchers, and also because my paper says they're hay stretchers. But um, why would you pick hay stretcher pellets? Don't all answer at once. It's kind of the same you guys answer for hay cubes and chopped hay. You either can't find hay because you live in California, or you have an old horse that can't chew the full long stem forage. Um, you, you don't exchange all of the hay for a hay stretcher. It, it really is to stretch out the hay. I have a question. Yes. Is it also correct to feed hay stretcher or hay cubes, all those products, if like your barn isn't feeding as much hay as you want and you just want your horse to get more forage? Sure. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the hay cubes, Carolyn, can you hold up the hay cubes? What I do with hay cubes is I use them for treats because I have a PSSM horse and it can't have sugar treats. And there, there are non-sugar treats, but these are pretty tasty, let me tell you. He will do a lot of things. And they're nice because they, they break apart. they almost like mini hay bales. You know, they break apart. So, Okay, we have two more. Yeah, cracked corn. So um, we crack corn for horses. We don't give them whole corn because the whole corn, if they don't crack it with their teeth, it kind of passes through the whole tract and it comes out the other end and it's, you see it as whole corn again. You're like, well, they didn't get much out of that. So they get more nutrition when it's cracked corn. But do we like corn as a, as a feed source for horses? You're shaking your head no. Why? It's got a lot of, of starches and, and the simple carbs, yeah, which get digested in the stomach and foregut, and it's not where we want. Why else? It's, it's really high in omega-6s, but it does smell good. Um, do you guys know the ratio of threes to s You do, yeah. What? No, it's much, much higher. Oh, here we go. High, low game. Um, so higher than three. But lower than? Lower than 70. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's really high. It's 57 to one, really, really high. So that's why we, we advise people, if you can get away from feeding corn, maybe don't choose corn oil. If you're gonna feed fat to your horse, it's just so, so high in omega-6s. All right, we have one more. You said the ratio in the corn is 57 to one, right? The ratio of omega-6s yeah. to omega-3s is 57 to 1 of corn. Yeah. yeah. But what you oh. want oh. is the ratio. Oh. Like in general, we want like more 3s three than, than 6. Yeah. Oh, is that what you were answering? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is that so, oh. Um, <laughs> what, so they're not sure what the ratio of 3s to 6s in horses should be, but pasture grass has a ratio of 4 to 1 omega-3s to omega-6s. So that's our best guess. So three is good enough. The, the issue is horses get a lot of omega-6s in their diet, so we have to feed them foods that more than balance out the ratio. Okay, this is our last one. It's pea. What'd you guys put for pea? Beet pulp, right. What do we do with beet pulp? Who's it for? Extra fiber, so what has more fiber? Um, a fortified grain, beet pulp, or hay? Hay. This is, so this is between grain and hay as far as nutrient composition. Um, and so you can exchange some of each for this. People do tend to soak it. You don't have to, but most people do. It comes in shreds like this. There's a company that makes bigger shreds and it, it um, rehydrates faster. So anybody feeding this to their horse right now besides me? I can't feed hay in my trailer anymore because his, his upper airway, his allergies are so bad that I just feed him beet pulp. And it makes for a really messy trailer because I do wet it for him, but 
he, I mean, I can barely get the door open. And he like, jumps in the trailer. He's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because, yeah, he loves this. So it's very, most horses find it very, very tasty. So for the hard keepers and the old horses that were like, oh, I don't want to eat, you put a little bit of this in front of them, and suddenly they're like, well, that's, uh, that's, that smells pretty good. So.